Good morning and welcome to you, Stick Nazarene. We are so happy and grateful to have you here worshiping with us this morning. Please stand for the reading of God's word. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 18, 1 through 3. I love you, Lord, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my, rock, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. This is the word of God, and the church says, Amen. Amen. We are truly saved from our enemies. We are truly saved. <laughs> And ready to go live forever with our king, our only king forever. Let's let's praise him this morning. Our God, a firm foundation, our rock, the only solid ground. Nations rise and fall. Kingdoms once strong now shaken, but we trust forever in your name, the name of Jesus. is the victory. You may be seated if you like. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise, and press the moon before the night shall veil the glowing skies. 
against the foe in veils below let all our strength be hurled faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world faith is the victory faith is the victory over us is love our sword the word of god we tread the road the saints above with shouts of triumph trod by faith they like a whirlwind's breath swept on o'er every field the faith by which they conquered death is still our shining shield comes the foe white raiment shall begin before the angels he shall know his name confessed in heaven then onward from the hill of light our hearts with love aflame will vanquish all the hosts of night in jesus conquering name Faith is a victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. That's right, no matter what's going on around here, our faith is in God. Our, our life is assured, no matter where we're at, no matter what's going on. This is my prayer in the desert When all that's within me feels dry This is my prayer in my hunger and need My God is the God who provides This is my prayer in the fire weakness or trial or pain there is a faith proved of more worth than gold so refine me lord through the flame and i will bring praise i will bring praise no weapon formed against me shall remain i will rejoice my prayer in the battle when triumph is still on its way i am a conqueror and co-heir with christ so firm on his promise i'll stand and i will bring praise i will bring praise no weapon formed against me shall God, I have a reason to sing. I have a reason to worship. 
God Almighty. We can't even comprehend your greatness, your awesomeness, Lord God. Yet you love us, yet you look down upon us and you, and you care for us. Lord, you know what we need before we know what we need. The Apostle Paul said to live is Christ, to die is gain. Thank you for that hope. Thank you for that love. Thank you for that promise. Lord God, this morning, help us to open our hearts and our minds to you, Lord, to fill us with that hope, with that faith, Lord. Help us to search for you, Lord, and find you. Thank you, Lord. Let's stand and sing, peace be still, for we know that he comes in in the stormiest parts of our lives fills us with his peace and with his hope. I don't want to be afraid every time I face the waves. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to fear the storm just because I hear it roar. I don't want to fear the storm. I don't want to fear the storm. Peace be still, say the word, and I will set my feet upon the sea until I'm dancing in the deep. voice that speaks I'm not gonna be afraid cause these waves are only waves I'm not gonna be afraid I'm not gonna be afraid I'm not gonna fear the storms you are greater than its roar I'm not gonna fear the storm upon the sea until I'm dancing in the deep oh peace be still you are here so it is well even when my eyes can 
Amen. How many of you have had a good week? Amen. How many of you had a good year? Amen. You know, I thought about, yeah, I, I thought about how at the beginning of this year, I remember preaching on the 2020 vision, you know, and having a clear vision. 2020 was such a wonderful earmark. I mean, 2020, how can you, I mean, that's just cheating, really. I mean, it's just handed to us to have a 2020 vision. Who would have thought that 2020 vision for 2020 was just make it through the year, right? 
But it's not. You know, there's blessings that are going on all around us and people that are thriving and, and good things are happening and God is, God is alive and on the throne and in the midst of difficulties, good things are still happening. I know my family, we're just counting our blessings, you know, happy to have a new member of the family, you know. I mean, it's, and we love Josh. And I go, man, how could I get any better than that to have a, a new son-in-law this year? That's a great year. That's a great year. Good things are happening. You know, and God is still blessing. He's still on the throne. He hasn't relinquished it. And he hasn't gotten lost. And he still knows where you are. He still knows your name. He still knows all that you're going through. And you've still got heaven waiting on the other side of this. No matter what you go through right now, no matter what or how hard it might get, it might be a few road bumps and speed bumps along the way, you might have some difficulties, you have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Man, there's nobody anywhere at any time who has had more of a reason to rejoice than you do. Man, that's who we are. We're the chosen ones. We're gifted. We're blessed. We're called. We're, we've, we've got the blood of Jesus Christ cleansing us, and we're filled with the Holy Spirit. Man, we have every reason to be unduly and irrationally optimistic. That's who we are. I know the rest of the world doesn't have a reason. You got a reason. Man, we are blessed. Don't let anybody tell you any different. We are blessed. We are the chosen children of God. Man, you can't get any better than that. I, I just want to remind you of that. I think it was just something every once in a while that we can get lost in. Matthew chapter 13 is where I'm going today. It's kind of fun because we've been preaching about peace in the storm. And then I also just love that song that we sang because I took us into a garden analogy this morning. But th the seed I've received, I will sow. Ooh, that's a great statement. That's a great statement. The seed, I know I'm filled to be emptied again. The seed I've received, I will sow. Wow. Are you doing that with all the blessings that God has given you? With all that he's given you, all these blessings, he's given you so much of a blessing. He's, he, he, he died on the cross. He sent his son who died on the cross, forgave us for our sins, filled us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow, what a seed you've been given. What a seed you've been endowed with. Now, what are you sowing it? What are you doing with it? God's given you all of the ability in the universe, and what are you doing? Well, I'm going to do the dishes this afternoon. Praise the Lord. That's a good thing. You know, I mean, what are you doing with all of the grace that you're the recipient of? You know, I mean, we've been given all of these blessings. What are we doing with them? This is Matthew chapter 13, verse, starting at verse 24. Oh, and you gave me a clicker today. Look at that. My blessings, my cup just keeps on flowing. It just overflows. I, I got power now. I'm going to move it just because I can. Okay. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Father, I praise you, Lord, for your blessings. And I thank you, dear God, for, for the forgiveness of our sins. And I thank you, Lord, that we can come to you today forgiven, holy, and declared pure and justified through the blood of Jesus Christ. We know that these are not things that we bring to the table, but, Lord, things that we take away. I praise you, dear God, for this time together, and I pray, Lord, that you would speak to your, through your servant. Lord, not my will, but yours be done. I pray, Father, hide the speaker behind the cross, God. Um, let us hear what you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I was thinking about this one, that the, the man goes out and he's sowing, good seed. He's sowing good seed. Well, it only makes sense. You wouldn't sow bad seed. I mean, if you're going to have to sow something, you want it to produce any kind of a good crop, you're going to sow something that you want. You know, it's kind of an irrational thing. If you sow something and expect something else to come up, you know, you're going to sow what you want. Um, we tried to start a community garden here at the church a couple of times, once right behind my house. And then another time, back behind the tree line there, we had a couple of people who, who took a shot at it. Um, but both times, we found that um, it's easier to plant the seeds than it is to pull the weeds. 
You know, um, a lot of people plant seeds, not a lot of weed pullers. Not a lot of folks want to go out and pull the weeds, and those, those weeds are so aggressive that they could take it over. And that's, that would be the analogy of the soil that I could, we, could, we kind of de deviate here. But the weeds were so aggressive, we just didn't like them. And the weeds we got around here are goat heads. And nobody wants to pull those things. Those things, those things are just so horrible, horrible. And so um, that's why when people come over to see our, our pigs now, I say, I, I found out that people don't like to plant community gardens, but a community bacon garden, now that's a different story. Those are a lot more fun. The man was sowing good seed. He sowed the kind of seeds that he wanted to reap. He knew what he wanted. He planted the seeds in order to get what he wanted. He said, what do I want out of life? What am I looking for? I'm going to sow those things. We'll get the results that I want so that I can have those things that I'm looking for. If I want something in my life, then I have to, I have to move in that direction. It's kind of ridiculous to go one way and expect something else to happen. He says, I'm going to sow the kind of seed I want, and I want good seed. I want good fruit, so I'm going to sow good seed. So he was out sowing his good seed. And the fun thing was, he wasn't thinking about it. He wasn't thinking about it. I was talking to a friend who said, you know what I did? I started getting my ground ready, getting ready to plant my garden. And I went out, and I tilled up the soil. And then um, I didn't plant any seed. So I went out before I, I tilled up. I put in some fertilizer and fertilized it. And, and then it, I let it sit for a while, and I still hadn't got around to planting it. And then I went back because it had gotten hard. By the time he had gotten around to planting it, he went back and, and turned it all over again and softened it up again so that it would be receptive to the seed. He said, about that time I realized, if I don't plant any seed, it doesn't matter how good the soil is. I've got to plant the seed. Not that there's any kind of a spiritual application for that, but I think that there might be. We've got to plant the seed. He wasn't just thinking about it. He wasn't just thinking about planting the seed. He was going to do it. Guys, if we are, if we are, if we are men and, and women of God, and we say we are going to sow righteousness, and we are going to bring people to know Jesus Christ, we've got to plant some seeds. We've got to tell people about Christ. You can't just think about it. One day in the future, I am really going to do something wonderful for God. You know how long you can say that? You can say that your whole life and never have accomplished anything at all. He wasn't thinking about planting seed. He wasn't debating about planting the seed he counted the cost and he was doing it he was doing it he was doing his best he was in the process of trying to see uh, the crop come to harvest so he planted the seed and then something happened while he slept the enemy creeped in mm, while he slept I put lethargy is opportunity missed but not by everyone you know sometimes when we're apathetic uh, the enemy is not he doesn't sleep he doesn't sleep Scripture compares Satan to a roaring lion. He's always on the prowl. He doesn't need to rest. He's still going after it. So we can, we can take a break. We can take a break. Whew, I don't want to do this anymore. I always say serving God is like wrestling a gorilla. You know, you don't quit when you get tired. You quit when the gorilla gets tired. You don't, you don't stop. You don't stop. You keep on going. You push forward, and you push forward that little bit at a time. Don't try, and, don't try and accomplish everything you're supposed to do in your lifetime in one minute. But accomplish what you're supposed to do in this minute. What are you supposed to do? We only, we're only given revelation for one step at a time. Don't try to live your life all at once, but live it one moment at a time. What am I going to do in this moment to advocate for the kingdom? What am I doing to represent Jesus Christ? How am I showing others the love of Christ at this moment? Just small things. Don't even try to do anything big. Just try to do something small. You, you notice people who aren't here today, some folks haven't been in church since this whole virus thing started. You know? Send them a letter, give them a phone call, email, whatever it is. Say, hey, we miss you. You know, we have folks who are watching at home. We miss you here. We miss you. S -s reach out. Reach out to the folks who are hurting. Just, 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 just small things, because small things are so much better than big things. The scripture tells us not to despise small things, but sometimes we do that. We always think it has to be something big, but because we can't do something big, we do nothing at all. Don't try to do anything big. Just try to do small things. And those small things add up. They're cumulative because there's enough of us to get something big done a little bit at a time. Evil doesn't take a break, though. He doesn't, take, he doesn't stop. So while he sleeps, while he rests, while he slumbers, the evil one creeps in. The evil one creeps in, and all of a sudden, he's got goat heads. Man, they're, they're blooming up. And those things are just nonstop. You know, I was thinking that what a, what a great analogy those are. I started trying to eliminate them out of my driveway, not even out of a garden. I've given up on trying to take them out of the garden. I just want them out of the driveway. 
You know, I, I, they can grow in the garden. Go take over the garden. Just get out of my driveway. You know, um, and I, I'm out there, and you know what I do now? I do, every time I'm starting to win, maybe I am. I think that I am, especially since they've stopped sprouting. But I go out, and every time I'm out there feeding the pigs and stuff, I just gather up a few and throw them into the fire a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. And I found out this really for goat heads. You leave them alone for a couple of weeks, and you're going to have a whole new crop, a whole new crop, and a bumper crop too. It'll be a big one, you know. But the battle goes on a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, always, always, always. In our spiritual journeys, we are either moving forward for the kingdom or we are sliding backwards. A little bit at a time. Are you reading your Bible? Are you praying? Are you reaching out? Are you loving people around you? Are you doing those things? Don't try and do them all at one time. And don't try to do a big thing. You know, you know some folks, I think that you need to pray. You know, you need to pray every day. You say, man, I have a hard time praying. Okay, well, don't pray very long. Pray for five minutes. Can you pray? Oh, pray for two minutes. Just stop and acknowledge the Lord in the moment, you know? And then after a while, you find out. I used to carry around a little notebook in my pocket. Times I pray. And I would stop. And I have to do this because I'm a visual learner. I don't, I don't learn anything at all. If you, just, if you speak it into my ears, I just forget. And so um, I, would, I would open up my little notebook, and I, would, and, I ha and I put little tally marks. Very complex, you know? <laughs> and I would just put a little line. Times I pray, I would stop and pray, and then I would just put a little line, and then and then and then I would stop and pray, and I would put another tally mark, and I just did that throughout the course of the day, and I just tried to tally how many times I stopped and prayed, and it, and I, I didn't stop and kneel down and have a big prayer time, and I wasn't yelling out and stuff. I mean, sometimes that happened, but I just tallied the marks to see how often I could pray. Do you know why? Because I wanted to develop and cultivate within my own life an attitude of prayer. But that's done a little bit at a time, not all at once. So don't try to do it all at once. Just take a little step at a time, whatever it is. Whatever it is in your life that you know what it needs to happen. The only the places where God is speaking to you, and you know that you need to develop it. If it's Bible study, if it's prayer. I do my, I do my devotion in the morning. Uh, you, some of you are with me. You watch that. Um, and I just, I just spend about f five to ten minutes uh, going through one chapter at a time. Now we're up to Proverbs. But we started that, Larry, we started in Genesis. We started in Genesis, and now we're through Proverbs. Just a little bit at a time. Not a lot. Anyway, but don't stop. Don't stop. While he slept, the enemy didn't sleep. So the enemy was able to sow these weeds, and he sowed, sowed, sowed these tares. And I understand, uh, through all my many years of farming experience, <laughs> I, I, not, not, don't I have years of farming experience? is that there are wheat and there are these weeds that look just like them in their area that look to, you can't even tell them apart and when you look at the weeds and you look at this the wheat stalks they look alike until they come to a head so until they bloom you can't tell them apart so then so then the uh, the workers come and say well should we go tear them out and the man says how would you know if you tear those out you're going to tear out half the crop because you can't tell them apart let's give them a little bit of time because because in time, what happens is, when they bring about fruit, you will recognize what they are by the fruit that they bear. At that time, at that time, we'll refine them. But we'll leave them alone until that time. We'll leave them alone until they're harvest. Don't try to pull up the weeds until they're done. Not while they're young. Sin reveals itself. The things that don't belong in your life, eventually you figure them out. You figure them out. If you're walking in submission to the Holy Spirit, I believe that God is very specific. When I stand up to speak, I have, I have the hardest time because um, I don't know what you struggle with. All of our sins are so, people are so creative. Brilliant. Brilliantly creative. You know, my grandmother's, I remember when my grandma was once, she was sitting there with my, my aunt, and my aunt said to her, and my grandma was always on a diet. I don't know why she was on a diet. I mean, it's like the doctor, she'd go to the doctor and the doctor would say, you've got to lose 50 pounds. And I go, too late to die young. Forget about it, Grandma. Eat what you want. You know, um, just have a good time. But she, so she, she subscribed more to my philosophy than to the doctors. But she was at this time trying to be good for whatever reason. I don't know. Um, uh, I, I think when I hit 80, I'm eating anything I feel like. I'm just giving you guys fair warning already. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. But anyway, so she had, uh, she had these chocolates on the counter. And my aunt says, don't you eat one of those chocolates. And my grandma says, don't you worry. I'm not going to take one of those chocolates. And she goes, I'm going to take two. <laughs> and she took, you know, she took two. You know, um, 
When you're doing something that you're not supposed to do, eventually it shows. And it's not a matter of trying to get away with what you can get away with. It's a matter of being humble and submitted to the Lord. And don't try to play any games. When he speaks to you and he says something is wrong, then get it out of your life. Stop it. Stop it. Our goal is not to try and get away with as much sin as we can. Our goal is to get as close to Jesus Christ as we possibly can and walk as close to him as we possibly can to actually look like Christ so that we can do those things that represent him so when we go before the Lord, we're not sitting there in shame. You know? But I'm sure we'll... Don't misunderstand me. There'll still be some things. There'll still be some things you hang on to. I'm sure there'll still be some things to be ashamed of. You won't be able to get rid of all of them. You know, but when the Lord... When I speak to something, I speak in general terms. Because people are too creative. They'll do like my grandma. I'll say, don't do that. And they go, well, I don't do that. I did two times that. You know, um, so I, I always like to say, you know, when we, went, we would go hunting, when I was a kid, we always hunted with shotguns. My brother went out, we were out once, and we had a, a, a squirrel ran across a branch. We would hunt for hogs and use double up buckshot, big, big pellets when you're hunting for hogs. But when you hunt for squirrels, you use birdshot, you know. But this squirrel ran across there, and my brother shot it with double up buckshot. And uh, we didn't eat that squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but, but you know, we always, we always hunted with shotguns. But you know the Holy Spirit, he hunts with a rifle. Do you follow the difference? When I shot, we would shoot, we would shoot and scatter a big area. I'll say, listen, don't sin. But when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, he's going to say, this is what you need to pay attention to. This is what you need to get rid of. I can't do that. I can't do that. And I don't want to do that. You know, glory to God. You know, in the Catholic Church, they have priests and they confess to their priests. You know, I don't want to be, I don't want you to confess to me. I don't want to know everything you've done wrong. Go talk to him. He likes that. Um, you know, um, I, I mean, if you've got a struggle and something you want me to help you pray for, I can do that. But I don't want to be the one that takes it all before the Lord to try to absolve you of everything you've ever done. I don't want to know. I want to accept you, love you, and I'll just tell everybody how righteous and holy you are if they ask me. It just, it's, it's, it's not my business. But the Holy Spirit, he'll say, this is what you need to work on. And when he brings that to your attention, well, surrender it to the Lord. Surrender it to the Lord. Um, the enemy doesn't take any breaks. The sin's going to reveal itself. But here's the problem that I ran into, and this is where I really, I really concentrated on here. Because the theme, again, remember, of this series is... Peace in the midst of the storm. How does that pertain to, the, to, the, to this? I mean, oh, good, good gravy. Anybody's ever done any farming? Uh, I remember, I remember uh, Roger, you telling me a joke years ago. It was, uh, the question was, what would a farmer do if he won the lottery? And it was, farm one more year. You know, uh, you know a, uh, there's a lot of stress, I think. And when I, drive, when I drive out to, like, Nancy's school or something, or, or Lynn, if you're, you're you know, you, those farmers, you see them out there with the, the lights on in their tractors when it's still dark out and they're out there working. That's, that's just way too hard to work. Um, that's just hard stuff. Those guys work hard. Um, so I, I see that there's probably a lot of storms in their lives. But I thought, I thought this, the big thing about this passage for us is don't sow the weeds yourself. You know, don't sow the weed yourself. Don't, you know, um, don't, don't create your own storm. You know, don't, don't, don't be the one who creates the problems. I was thinking when our kids were um, in quizzing, we took the, the uh, quiz team down the, uh, uh, down the Boise River. We floated the river. We had the inner tubes. And, and those kids were smart, too. I mean, the, you know, our, I, I, I mean, I think the dumb ones were probably had a 3.6 GPA. Those were all some smart, smart, stupid kids. And uh, we were floating down the river, and they had tied one of the rafts to one of the inner tubes. They had them tied together because they were buddies, you know, so they wanted to stay close together. But they, they so they had about a six-foot rope tied between them. Um, so we're float. have you guys floated the Boise? It was fun. I mean, I was sitting in this inner tube. I just float along and just bounce off of stuff, you know. It's just kind of lazy and you just, just hang out. You know, you'll, 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 you'll move yourself around a little, but it's just a leisurely roll. It's not like going whitewater rafting, you know. Um, but anyway, so we're going down the river, and these kids are tied together, and these brilliant children, um, they came up to the Boise Bridge, and the bridge goes across there, and you got the pylons. They're tied together, Angela, they're tied together, and one goes on either side of the pylon. 
I'm thinking, how, how high an IQ you got to have in order to stop and figure out what's going to happen there? I mean, this is, just, this is just not rocket science. You know what I'm saying? And I'm thinking, dude, these kids are supposed to be smart. And so, so when they go on the either side of the pylon, you know what's coming. Uh, they, they got now the whole force of the Boise River coming behind them, trying to force them around there. I was blessed. I was close enough that I jumped off of my inner tube and swam over there, and I, I gave my inner tube to one of the kids that was in the most duress. You know, you take it. And then, and then they were, the, but, but the raft and the tube were both pinned against the pylon, and, and, it, and there's so much water pressure there. I don't remember how we finally got it out. I don't remember if we were able to cut the rope or if I, if I was able to get the inner tube up off of it. We got it free, but it was a, uh, it was a beast in a fight. And mostly the biggest thing is we didn't want to lose a kid. You know, I mean, so these guys were in a leisurely floating place where it's just easy and not a hard time. It's easy to stay safe. The water is calm. And they created a situation where it was life-threatening and it was really, really bad. And I think, you know, life is not that hard, but sometimes we can make it even harder than it is. Sometimes it throws you some curves, but the worst thing is when we become our own worst enemies. When we're sowing something that is not from God, it will bring about a harvest not in keeping with what we desire as children of righteousness. Do you follow that? Sometimes people say, man, I'm thinking this or I'm doing this, and so they, they go out to do something that they think is wrong because they want to get it out of their system. You've heard people say that? They're going to sow their wild oats. You know when you sow wild oats that those wild oats bloom? They blossom and they bring about more wild oats. You're not actually getting rid of it. You're actually sowing it in. When you do things that you know are wrong, it doesn't, it doesn't saturate, satiate your appetite. It wets it. You want more. You don't want less. You want more. That's the nature of sin. It'll take you down roads that you want to, don't want to go. Here's what, where you eventually wind up at some place and at some point where you stop and think, what am I doing here? What am I doing lost out in left field? I knew better than this. I knew that my life was better than this. I knew I shouldn't have done this. And then you start just a step or two down a road and you wind up someplace crazy and you have a whole field of weeds and, no, and no, no good things at all. I believe at that point, friends, I mean, I, at that point, you've got to confess and just bring it back to God. Lord, I, I need you to can clean me up and tear this stuff up. Let's replow and plant a new field, whatever we've got to do. But, but dear friends, when you know something doesn't belong, in humility, we confess our sins. God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That's the promises of God. I, I looked up two verses there. I, I mean, those are the ones that I put up there. I actually just Googled it, reap what you sow, and I came up with a hundred different verses that, that referred to reaping what you sow. Uh, that Job 4.8, as I have seen those that plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. Proverbs 11.18, the wicked earns deceptive wages, but one who sows righteousness gets a sure reward. And I didn't even go, go into Galatians 6 for you. But there are many, many verses, either in some way or another, over and over and over and over and over again, drive home this one concept. You will reap what you sow. If you're in the middle of the storm, be careful. You know, um, uh, when I was a kid, we'd take our, our little rowboats out, and uh, they were wooden boats. You guys ever try and sink a boat? Or like a wooden one, they don't really sink. They will once they get completely saturated, but when you first sink them, you could just pull the plug in the back and drive the boat down underwater, and then the boat would be sunk in the canal or in the water, and we would be playing in a boat that's kind of sunk, but it's still kind of floating a little bit, but it's not really. You got to drag it over the shore, dump the water out in order to make it a boat that floats on top again. But we would sink our boat because we, we just thought it was fun. We were just having a party, you know, and so we'd take the boats over there and sink them, and then sometimes we'd flip it upside down and swim in, in, in and out from underneath of it and stuff, um, which is fine, I mean, when you're just playing. But um, that wouldn't be the boat that you'd want to go fishing in. It wouldn't be a boat that you'd use for anything else at that particular moment. But if you, if you, if you set the precedence, you know, if you're the one that's rocking the boat, man, it, it, the water might not be all that rough. You're creating your own rough water. 
You know, you're creating your own scenario where things are going to go wrong. Friends, when we know to follow Jesus Christ and we know how to walk as Christians and we know how to do those things that promote righteousness and goodness, then do those things. And when you're doing something you know is not from God, then get it out of your life. Stop doing it. This is not that hard. It's hard to do. It's easy to understand. Hard to do. Sometimes when you have something that doesn't belong there, find somebody to confess to. Pastor Ron nodded his head. He'll take it. You know, when you know that you're doing something you shouldn't be, go tell somebody, listen, you know, Doug, I'm doing something really stupid, and I need somebody to hold me accountable because I'm going to keep on doing stupid things if I don't have somebody to talk to about it. And Doug will say, hey, praise the Lord, I do stupid things too. You came to the right place. You know, there's nobody who's perfected this. There's nobody who does it all right all the time and who has it down. You know, so I think it's totally okay to turn to somebody else when you need to and say, I got something I need prayer for. There's something wrong in my life and I need to get it out. Now, if the Holy Spirit convicts you and you work it out with God and you get rid of it, praise God. But if you need somebody else, then don't hesitate to do that either because I think that it really does us a, really wor a world of good when we have people that hold us accountable and say, I did some bad stuff and I need somebody to hold me accountable for it. Don't sow the weeds. Friends, don't sow them yourself. If the enemy comes in and does it, we'll have through the power of the Holy Spirit, he and I are going to take care of it together. But I don't want to be the one who does it myself. Don't be guilty of putting it in there yourself. Man, these are my weeds. I'm, I'm getting me a bumper crop. I got them going. They're going to really do well this year. Glory to God. Not for us. Not for the children of light. Victory is yours in Jesus Christ today. Um, don't create. Don't create your own storm. Uh, I'll, I'll close this, but it just reminds me of this, this story of the guy going up a hill, two men on a tandem bicycle riding up this hill. And this guy on the front is just going to beat the band. He's pedaling all he can. He's doing everything he can to move this bike forward. They get all the way up to the top. And the guy says, holy cow. I didn't think we were ever going to make it up to the top of this hill. It is so steep. That was so hard. The guy on the back said, I was terrified. He said, man, I didn't think we were going to make it either. He says, man, I, I knew we were going to roll back down. He says, I think we would have too if I hadn't kept my foot on the brake the whole time. You know. <laughs> Guys, keep working for the kingdom. Whatever God puts in your path, take it. Joyfully declare the victory of Jesus Christ in that circumstance, and the victory is ours. It's ours. Just for the claiming and just for the taking. Uh, do you have a song for us? Okay. Then come. Worship team closes. Verse 5. Let's stand and sing. This is our prayer this morning that we get to know our Savior more and more. In the secret, in the quiet place, in the stillness, you are there. In the secret, in the quiet hour, I wait only for you, cause I want to know you more. I want to know you, I want to hear your voice, I want to know you more.
their place in the stillness you are there Father, we praise you and we thank you, dear God, that you, you are in the stillness, that you are in that quiet place, and that you meet us there. I pray, dear Lord, that through the course of this week, we would, we would take advantage of the opportunities that you provide us to still our souls, to hear from you, to speak with you, commune with you. Lord, that you would, that you would help us in our spiritual journeys, Lord. That our lives, we, we would be spent, dear God, and invested in sowing good seed. And take those things out of us, Lord, those, those weeds, that, that, that want to take root and distract us from the things of the kingdom. Uh, make us holy as you are holy. Set our, set our sights on greater things, we pray. In Jesus' holy name, amen. God bless you, friends. You're, you're dismissed. Uh, wave at each other and be friendly.